what should it be for, for you a good collaboration between a director and the main cast? Mm. So I think that uh, it's important to give a lot of things to do for the actors. You know, the director has to provide a lot of activities that people can do on the screen, um, give some time for rehearsal, and to have some interesting discussions with the actors about, about the context of the story and where where the story is headed. And, where are you shoot mainly this movie and how, in how many days? Uh, we shot the film in six weeks, six five day weeks, so 30 days. After Done to the Bone with Vera Faminga, one Winter to Bone with Jennifer Lawrence, Live No Trace is your new movie. Ben Foster and Thomasin Mackenzie are so perfect in this movie and we feel a real link between them. How have you found this great young actress? What can you tell us about the cast? Um, well, um, well, Tom, Thomas McKenzie plays Tom and she's from New Zealand um, and she is someone who puts a lot of her own imagination into the role and she was, became very great at the knife skills and participating fully in the forest. And ben is someone who had um, a lot of previous work and, and spent a lot of time thinking about the lives of veterans. He had, he had a lot of material that he could draw forward to work uh, in the role of the father. Um, and he too also really loved working with the... What can you tell us about your work with the composer Deacon in life? Deacon yeah. is a wonderful composer. Uh, and he's actually composed quite a few films. Um, well, he's composed for many films but quite a few here in France, and um, he, he, was, he worked, collaborated with Claire Denis years ago mm -hmm. and some other filmmakers, and I, I really love that he's extremely flexible and that he understands that a score can be minimalist and still very effective. And I, I love that he can really accommodate the space for people to think during a film, and, um, and he likes to work very closely with music from the region and kind of respond to that and integrate that. So he's just, he's really a, a gift to the film community. As a screenwriter, why can you tell us about your work on the screenplay with Anne Rosellini and the adaptation of the book My Abandon by Peter Roach? So uh, Peter's book is, is a, a book that my abandonment, it's sent right there in the Pacific Northwest in Portland. And it had a lot of texture, a lot of details. It looked like it would be a really strong book to adapt and we did that. We, we made a first couple passes at, at a very close adaptation and then as we did research we changed the story a bit and we made it like a marriage between the book and what we really found. Uh, which format of this movie was the most difficult for you to, to shoot and why? Hmm. I think what was most difficult was always the time there's never enough time on a film, so you have to work very quickly. Um, and I think, um, you know, I think the some of the scenes that had quite a few characters in it or had a, any, any kind of crowds, so those are always those are hard. Those are hard for a low-budget film, but I had a lot of help, I had a lot of help from the crew. Why did you find such great inspiration for this movie? Because also very great on this movie. So photography, so actor, all is perfect. Mm -hmm. As a symphony. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I work closely with the photographer Michael McDonough, and he is a wonderful collaborator because we go over images from other people's movies that we love, and we take he takes a lot of stills. But this one, we get the pleasure of uh, taking a lot of stills, doing research photography, looking at other films that deal with. Um, Light, light and darkness in the woods. And we went with a very minimal setup. He was very willing to use natural lighting, which was hugely helpful. And um, you know, he, he made a very, he had a very small footprint. He used a, a way of being close to the characters that wasn't too invasive. You know, there's not a lot of gear. So it keeps it quite quiet. It's a quiet set. Did you shoot your movie in the history continuation or not in the same, same order? Uh, you know, we, we had incredible good fortune to be able to shoot it in the order of the story, which was so helpful to me and, 
actors, it's one of the best possible things that can happen in shooting a film. Lim No Twice is one of my favorite Doyle Film Festival movies and show for me the real face of the America. Watching a movie, I feel about the movie Witness with Harrison Ford. Uh, the main characters live in the harmony with the nature and reject all electronic means as communication as phone, computer. What must be for you the place of the humans regarding this environment? So, uh, the place of women in the nature, for example. Do you think they must be more looking for environment? For example, help for animals and things like that. Um, because on your movie, they reject all electronic things. They don't want phones, they don't want a right. computer, they want to live in nature, they want to make some culture, to eat some food in the forest, for example. Yeah. What, what is for you the best place for humans in the nature environment? Oh, oh, oh. Um, Ecology. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Um, you know, we're too far along in history, you know, to, for yes. everyone to live in the forest, you know, it's not going to happen, uh, nor, nor could it happen. But um, I do think that uh, when people feel it, they might need to opt out or they need to try a different lifestyle. If they can, it's probably very meaningful to try it, you know, um, to live when you feel that you are not in any way flourishing. Uh, it's, it's painful to think about that, and yet, Many people don't have this lifestyle option. It's not. It's not just. Oh, I don't. I, I want to change. I think. I'll, you know. You need. You need to have support and resources. You know. And so, this is a. This is a human dilemma from the dawn of time. You know. What is for you regarding this movie the definition of freedom, and can we saw this movie as a post-apocalyptic way to survive? Yeah, I was really trying not to conflate this with the apocalypse. This is supposed to be really the here and now. Yes. Yes. So, um, you know, I don't, I, 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 I struggle. I don't, I, I find it very hard to contemplate the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was seeing it as a humble way to survive now yes. without an apocalypse. The photography of your movie is amazing and gorgeous. Why can you tell us about your work with Michael D White Donoff? So, so yeah. To work. yeah, yeah, so, um, how did you work with him? Yeah, so with Michael, I, I do, we look at a lot of films together. We pick the styles and approaches, and we pick lenses, and, um, and he, he put a lot of time into actually picking two different kinds of lenses, one for the forest and one for the city, with different kind of texture to them. So he's very, um, he's very creative in terms of how he wants to have the visuals you know, really assist in getting involved with the story and bring you in. Do you have some French actresses that you would like to work with and why? <laughs> ah, well, oh, there's always, over, there's, over the years, there's been quite a few, yes. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah, I, I, I really, I see uh, quite a few French films where I'm really super impressed with the acting and, and yes. yeah. What kind of advice could you give to someone who would like to work as a director? Um, pick stories that are close to home that you can that you can tell uh, with without having to use a huge amount of equipment. And my last question: What are your current projects? Um, I'm working on a documentary that deals with life after incarceration. What what, what it takes to build a life after you've been in prison, and I'm also working on a new fiction film. Thank you very much. Thank you.